This right here is Wisconsin's best storm chasing vehicle. Over the winter, tons of equipment was purpose built to ensure that you at home don't miss a second of the storm. In this video, I want to give you an in-depth tour of everything that's been added. This is my 2025 storm chasing gear. There are three main components to the storm chasing puzzle. And first, and most important, is navigation. I need to know where the best storms are and what roads are available to take me there. The first step of navigation is a forecast. Pivotal Weather and College of DuPage are my go-to sites for accessing the weather models. In the days before Chase, these models are a great tool to help me get a rough idea of where I need to go. When Chase Day arrives, I have to pick a target that I think will perform the best. During Chase Day, things move fast, so I need only the most essential information available at the push of a button. And the best place to get that is the Storm Prediction Center's Mesoscale Analysis. It has every weather parameter that I could ask for, so I can quickly get a handle on what target I think looks the best. Now that we have our storm targeted, it's time to hit the road. When I'm actively pursuing a storm, maps and radar become the most crucial tools at my disposal. I use two different radar apps. First up is RadarScope. This is the app that I'm looking at during a chase. I have mine set up to display only the most valuable information, so I don't have to go digging through menus to find some random radar product. Next up is Radar Omega. This is the app I use so you watching at home can keep track of the storms. Radar Omega lets me pair my phone's GPS to a computer back at home. This lets me remotely display my location, which is especially important for the live streaming setup I'm going to show you soon. All these tools for navigation are great, but if I can't get data, then none of it's going to work. That's why communication is the next key component of the storm chasing puzzle. On the roof of the car, you'll notice two key pieces of equipment. First is a cellular data booster. This acts like a miniature cell tower. Storm chasing often takes me through the rulest roads in America, and cell coverage out here isn't the best. This cellular booster amplifies my cell signal so I can have a strong connection in places like this. The roads out here suck. Yep. <laughs> the cell booster is great, but various factors can interfere with its connection. Rain can cause signal to fade, chaser traffic can limit bandwidth, or cell towers might just be too far away. That's where this next tool can fill in the gaps. This is a Starlink dish that feeds me high-speed internet through satellite. In my testing, the Starlink internet speeds can outperform standard cellular connections. Having two connections is awesome, but what if I could use them both as one? That's where Speedify comes in. Speedify is a service I have on all my devices, and it joins my Starlink and cellular connection into one. This makes them act like one ultra-fast connection while adding some redundancy. If one connection stops working, the second connection can pick up the slack. Having these high-speed internet signals available to me in the middle of anywhere ensures that you at home don't miss a second of the action, which feeds into the final piece of the storm chasing puzzle, documentation. One of the ways I like to document my chases is through many documentaries that I periodically release through the year. And of course, to make those documentaries, I'm gonna need a lot of cameras. My car is packed full of cameras, and each one fulfills a specific job. First is the camera on my dashboard, this is a Sony FDR AX700, and it's been my main video camera for several years. I think this is the perfect storm chasing video camera. And the reason for that is because of its lens. Most camera lenses change focus when you zoom in or zoom out. That means when you're zooming in for that close tornado shot, your video is going to go out of focus. This camera has a parfocal lens. That means it holds the same focus, no matter how zoomed in you are. All I have to do is manually set the focus at the start of the day, and then I don't have to worry about it. Below that is a GoPro Hero 7. This camera is in charge of filming what's happening inside the car. That connects you at home with what I'm planning for my next move, my reaction to the storm, and what happens when things don't go according to plan. Good to go again. In the passenger seat are my cameras for the Supercell Glamour shots. First is my Sony A7R Mark II. 
This camera has an incredible high resolution 42 megapixel sensor. That high resolution helps this camera churn out some beautiful time lapses and photos. This is also my secondary video camera for when I have time to get out of the car and enjoy the show. Next to that is a Nikon D7500. The sky can do some crazy things during a storm. So I often have the A7R2 pointed one way and the Nikon is pointing another. That way I can get two different shots from the same scene. Sometimes those crazy skies happen while I'm driving and I might not be able to get out of the car and set up a camera. This Sony A7S Mark II has that covered. Mounted on the door, this setup allows me to get those cinema quality shots from the car's side window. And on the roof is a 360 degree GoPro camera. This lets me see what's happening all around the car and it can capture some crazy wide angle shots. All of those cameras are just so I can make the highest quality videos possible here on YouTube. But there's also another tab for live streaming. Last year, I started broadcasting my chases live. Yes, this storm, for all y'all people in Lake Mills and kind of eastward from there down I-94, this storm does have tornado potential. And we are the only chasers live on this storm. Look at how fast that's spinning down there. I was only using an old cell phone to do it. It got the job done, but old potato phones can't handle live streaming super well. That's why I upgraded everything I use to power the live stream. Last year, I was limited to streaming out my windshield, but now I have cameras that can point any direction. On the roof is my new dome camera. Underneath this acrylic bubble is an Obsbot Tiny. This is just a USB webcam, but it can rotate and tilt to follow the action to the sides and behind my car. While this dash cam can stream out the front windshield at a slightly higher quality than the old potato phone. Also attached to my dashboard is this miniature monitor. While I'm streaming, I wanna make sure that the cameras have a clear view of whatever the storm is doing. Keeping a monitor nearby makes it easy for me to check what they're capturing. These cameras are fed right into a computer that lives in my back seat. This computer is connected to my desktop at home, which runs all the graphics. Then from that desktop, it's sent out to YouTube. Finally, I have this control panel on my center console so I can quickly change camera views without having to take my eyes off the road. As you can see, there's been a ton of work put into this car to make sure it's up to spec for the 2025 storm season. And I hope you'll subscribe to join me on my tornado hunting adventures this spring. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be back again soon.